I want to show you how you can format your text and also the box that contains the text. First of all, the text itself. Let's do that by clicking on the text so we can activate the text box and we can see the cursor flashing within it. And then go ahead and click and drag to select the text that you would like to apply formatting to. When you do that, the mini formatting toolbar appears and if you move down and away, it starts to disappear. But if you go right back up, it reappears. If you completely move off, well, you can't bring it back unless you reselect it or right click on the selection and hey, there it is, it's right there, in addition to the shortcut menu. So you can go ahead and click on B for bold to deselect the bold or add it back in. Italics, underline, change the font type. Ooh, how about AR Berkeley? And you can see when I hover over it gives me a preview down here. Well, not unless you're looking at it when I'm hovering. Now I'm hovering. Go ahead and take a quick look. There you go. And you can change the font size. You can either select it or you can actually click in here and type it in. Like if you want something 41, hit enter. Ooh, it's a little bit bigger. Let's go back to 40 and hit enter. And you can also change the font color. Click on the drop down arrow and you've got these theme colors. And you can see when I hover over that one, it gives me a preview of it and it gives me the name of it. It's pink accent to lighter 60%. Ooh, that's a fun name. And then you've got your standard colors. You can have more colors. So you've got your two sections here where you can click and pinpoint a color and then choose what kind of shading you'd like like something less shaded or a darker shade. And you can see down below what's currently the color as opposed to the new color that you're about to click OK on, unless I click Cancel. And then down below you got your color model, which has your RGB, red, green, and blue. And you can type it in if you'd like and say, well, I'd like it at 40. And you can see it moves these things around accordingly. Your shading as well as your colors here. Or you can click on Standard and do a honeycomb color. Like, you know, you can choose a blue and, oh, that's nice, but I'm going to click cancel. You can choose anything you'd like there, or you can also come up here on the home tab to the font group and you can change your colors there. Now, in addition to that, you do get the eyedropper. And that was also available when you right clicked and you went to the mini formatting toolbar, clicked on the drop down arrow. It's there as well. And what that does is when you click on it, you get the eyedropper. And wherever you hover that over, that little box will show you the color that you're about to suck up. And when you suck it up, it's going to apply that color to, well, the selected text. So if I do it on black, my text has just about disappeared here. In any case, let me come up here on the quick access toolbar and thank goodness for the undo. Click undo what I just did. And then the other way that you can do this is by coming up here and you get the related contextual format tab. It's only available when you're working in the text box because when you click outside of it, it's not there. So when you go ahead and click inside of it, Come up here, it's there, click on the Format tab. And we've got two things that we'll be working on in the Word Art Styles group and the shape. Now we'll come to the shapes in just a minute, but let's focus on the actual words, the text, the characters themselves. And this is the Word Art Style, which is a combination of these three guys right here. The first is the color of the text. As we just went over, when you click on the drop down arrow, you get your colors and it fills in the text or what you have selected down below. And I've got four selected, so when I choose yellow, it's just force that's going to be changed to the yellow color. And you've got, you know, more fill colors, eyedroppers, and ooh, you get more special options. Like you can actually choose to have a picture when it comes to filling in the text. And so if you want to click on that, and you can either search online or browse on your computer, click browse. And let's go to pictures, double click sample pictures. Let's do a chrysanthemum, double click, and ooh, that force, if I didn't know any better, it looks like it was on fire. But it's a chrysanthemum, that's the picture, or filling in the text there. So let's go ahead and undo that. Now notice how I don't have it selected, but because the cursor's flashing in it, it's selecting the entire word. So it looks at the space and it says, well, I'll just focus on the word here. But if I want everything to be formatted, or have my formatting applied to it, then I've got to select everything. Come back up here, click on the drop-down arrow, and you can do gradients, how the color comes in. Is it lighter from the outer edge and then darker in the center? And then you can get to more gradients. So what you don't see here, when you click on that, it's going to open up the task pane over to the right and give you more options. Ooh, even more than that. But let's close out of that. Don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. And click on the drop down arrow and you can also apply texture. And you've got more textures. Well, you can do something like hover over that oak. In any case, there you go for the fill in effects. Click off. 
and then we got the outline text outline click on that so it outlines your letters there your characters in red you see the preview down below in there alrighty and you get the other options here like we saw before except when it comes to the outline you can choose a thickness so you can really go crazy and make it super thick you can see the preview right there it gets pretty thick and you can say well for the outline how about instead of a solid line we do dashes and I don't know if you can see that oh, well that's trippy yeah I can see that and you can do more lines which again is going to open up the task pane and when I close out of that We'll cover that in just a minute. We want to finish up the rest here. So in addition to the fill, the outline, now you have effects. Click on that, and you can do shadows. Add a shadow to your text here, which I don't know if you can really see it because the background's dark. You can choose reflections, glow, ooh, something warm, glowing, glowing, warm. Click on that, and that you can see when I hover over it is 18-point pink accent color 2. Click on it, and I'll click off. Oh, that's a nice glow. Let's go ahead and select that again, and then come back up here. Click on the drop down arrow. You can do something beveled and hover over it, and you can kind of see the letters getting beveled there with an angle to it. And you get more options over here in the task pane. We'll cover that in a minute. 3D rotation. Wow, well, you can really flip this thing around upside down and all around. Now, when I hover over that, you are looking down below here to see the preview of it, right? Because if not, oh, you're missing out. There you go. You can also transform it and say, hey, let's do it in an arch. Cool. So you can do that, or like I said, if there's additional features for you to work on, you can click on one of these drop-down arrows, and then, you know, when you get to the end of the rope and it says, here's more, you click on it, it opens up the task pane. Or, you can come up here in the Word Art Style group and click on this expandable dialog box button. When you do that, it opens up the task pane, and you get two options. You have the shape options, which is referring to the shape styles here. And we're not going to go over that just now, but we're focusing on the text options. I mean, we expanded it from the style, and that's the text, hence the text options is in bold. And you got three options here. You can do the text fill and outline, and then this one's the text effects, and it's just like we saw up here, outline, effects, and then the last one, what do we have here? Ooh, let's hover over it, text box. So the text box itself, and let's go on the first one here, text fill and outline. So you can add a solid color for the fill, just like we went up here and clicked on the drop down arrow, chose a color to fill it in, or you can come down here and say you want a solid fill, and click on the drop down arrow and choose something like that. Oh, that's not looking good. Let me click off. Well, in a way, it's kind of cool. In any case, go ahead and select it. And, oh, where are we at now? Oh, you see how it changed? It went from text options to shape options because, well, when I clicked in the text box, the shape, it wants to divert to that. So I have to come back up here if I want to work on my text options again. And we're back to our solid fill. Now, in addition to being able to color it in, you know, with the other options that we learned up here, that we found out up here, you know, with gradient, have a picture like a chrysanthemum or a pattern fill, which is there if you want a pattern, but you also get transparency. So if you want to click and drag that so it's more transparent, oh, that doesn't look good at all. I better keep it pretty solid and not too much transparency. And then you got the text outline, which is up here. We chose the outline from that, or you can have a solid outline. And it defaults to this color green. And if you don't like that, let's scroll down. You can change the color there. You can change the width, as we saw up here. You can also change the dash type. And then the cap type, flat, round, the cap meaning at the end. And then the join type, where it joins together. I mean, you just got a lot of options here. So it really gets detailed. Okay, so that's for the text field, text outline. Then the next one is the effects, which is what we saw here when we clicked on the drop down arrow. So the first one's a combination of these two fields. The last one is just all the effects and it gives us more than what we see here so when I came down to 3d rotation I'm like oh, this is all you got have you got more when I come down here and I click on that it opens up the task pane and you see it right there 3d rotation so if I just since I'm here expand it you get additional options in fact you can get more particular with your X rotation you can do it well you know by the mouse going this way, 15 degrees, 30 degrees, or that way, turning it around, and you can see it over here being flipped. Or you can go ahead and just type in a number and do it numerically there. And if you want to go back to the way it was, click on Reset. So there's for the text options, and I'm not really in love with it. I mean, we do have the Word Art style here that's already been applied to it. And what's Word Art? Well, let's close out of here and come back up here. It's a combination of these three. So if I come down here and select it, and I come back up here, click on the More button, and I hover over that, 
You see down below, you get the preview of it, right? And this one's called Gradient Fill Turquoise Accent Color 4, Outline Turquoise Accent Color 4. <laughs> okay. So if I don't like any of those, if I clear the word art, it's going to clear the word art that I had before. Let me click on it. And I go back to this. Ugh. I don't like that. So let me hit undo. What I can do is if I want to clear anything that's been applied to the word art, what we had there previously, I can come up here and click on the Home tab, go to the Font Group, and click on Clear All Formatting. And we're back to where we started with the original word art. Isn't that kind of a sneaky trick? In any case, that works for me. Now let's come back up here, click on the Format tab, and let's focus on the shape itself. So you got the shape fill. You can click on the drop down arrow and hover over color and it fills in the entire text box or shape with gold accent 3, lighter 60% and that's just not doing it for me. I probably won't choose any of these because eh, that's okay. In any case, you can click on those. You get the same options, same concepts. You can do more color and you get your honeycomb and your custom here. Click cancel. And so if you want to fill it in with something, great. And you've also got the eyedropper you can pick or choose a picture gradient if you want to choose something here or do more gradients so it's pretty much the same thing as what we covered here but instead of for the text you're doing it for the shape and then you got the outline of the shape oh look <laughs> i thought it was going to stay green there and there's the outline of the shape if i hover over any one of these colors that looks all right and just the same thing you're just choosing an outline in various ways here and also the thickness if you want to make that outline super thick or if you want to go with dash there you go. So there's that. Let's click off and ugh, let's hit undo. I don't want it to outline it like that. Again, we're just focusing on the shape, not the text. And then you have the shape effects. Click on the drop down arrow. And it's just like you have it for your text, you know, your shadow reflections. And do we want a shadow? It's not going to show up there because of the dark background. But hey, how about something glowing 18 point? I don't have a color selected for it. Let's do a shape fill real quick. And now you can see the contrast, the blue with the glowing effect. Okay, it's not looking pretty, so let me hit undo a couple of times, or there we go. You've got all that, or you have a combination of all that with your shape styles. Click on the drop down arrow for the more. You can hover over that, and as you hover over it, it gives you the name of it, and also you can see in the preview, well, the preview of it down below. And so something like that, oh, I guess that could be okay. I wonder how that blends. And that one is Intense Effect Pink Accent 2. Click on it and, ooh, I'm getting pretty wild here. In any case, you do have the expandable dialog box button that opens up the task pane over to the right that instead of doing the text, you're now working on the shape options, which includes the fill. The fill here and the extra details down below. And then you also have the line, the outline of it. And then you got your gradient stops. And what that means is that as it goes from one color to the next, well, I got quite a few. How about instead of going from light and then stopping and then turning it to this color and then going a little bit further inside to that color, how about if I just delete some of these gradient stops? Oh, there's just so many of them. And we just kind of do this. And then we change this stop so when it goes from a light pink, it looks like a light pink, to something else, we can say that's something else with that stop selected. Click on the drop down arrow, could be blue. Okay, wasn't my best choice but you know where I'm drifting. So as we go from a light pink to a blue, and then it goes from a blue back to a, a pink, and then a lighter pink, you see how that gradient goes? And then you've got the direction of it. You can change the direction of it, and, you know, well, it's kind of a nice little linear diagonal pattern from the top left to the bottom right. Click on that. Color choices aren't that great, especially with the Dreamforce here. In any case, you can go ahead and get more detail about that, and then you can go to the next option, which is Effects. Just as with the text options, you've got your shadow, reflections, glow, soft edges, and oh, your 3D rotation, even for the box. You can go ahead and mess with that, and we can twist it down, and oh, look at that. That's horrifying. Let's reset. <laughs> and then my experiment is not going as quite as beautiful as I'd hoped it would. And then finally, the last one here is size and properties. So the size of the text box, you can use the resizing handles and click and drag it to make it larger and automatically updates it here. Hit undo, or you can do it numerically and just type it in and say, look, I want it to be exactly one. Hit enter. There's your one inch. And then you can see now it's of its original size, 109%. So if I scale it back down to its original size, which is 100%, oh, there we go. And when I scale it down vertically, it doesn't keep it horizontally unless I lock it. That means whatever I type in up here for the height or the width or for the scaling, it updates the other to keep the ratio the same. So one doesn't get longer or wider than the other. 
So if I go up to 1, then it updates the width. If I update the width, it updates the height, keeps it locked together. I can unlock that. And then the position of, like, it's the text box here. Horizontal position is 1 inch from the top left-hand corner. The vertical is 4.75 inches from the top left corner. So horizontal is over 1 inch right there. We verified that. And from the top left-hand corner, it's down 4. Well, you see 3, 2. Well, you got to think of that as 4. Uh, right about, well, just a little bit past that because that's half. So it's about 4.75 inches from the top. And then you've got the text box here. Scroll down. Vertical alignments from the top. Text directions horizontal as opposed to rotating that or flipping it or having it stacked. And it's not stacked because I don't have it stretched down far enough so it can start stacking. So ooh, we're just really getting crazy here, aren't we? So you can see a lot of the extra options you get and how close the text is to your margins, top, bottom, left, and right. And so you can say, look, I want a greater margin from the left-hand side, so it pushes it out, and you can shrink that up. And then the alternating text, meaning that, as you can see in the pop-up, a title can be read uh, to a person with a disability and is used to determine whether they wish to hear the description of the content. So you can say, well, this is the title, Dreamforce, the description, well, it's about our company, and we like to create training videos, and type it all in there. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.